Drop like a stone in this river now. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Downtown Dish. Yes, I did move inside this week. It's a little warm outside for my liking. But don't worry, we've got the same fun, packed episode for you. Super excited about our guest lineup this week. We are going to check in with Chantil Gori, who is owner and founder of New Sense of Style. And they have a new showroom open downtown. A completely new shopping experience awaits. She's going to give us all the details. We're also going to check in with Natasha Fuller, cultural curator and the brains behind one of Kansas City's newer pop-up yoga events, Yoga on the Vine, happening every weekend in the heart of the 18th and Vine Jazz District. We're also going to catch up with Liz Cook, a restaurant critic of The Pitch, to find out how her job's changed the last few weeks and also get the scoop on where she's eating. Stay tuned. Want to give a shout out this week and every week to our partners for helping to make the downtown dish happen. Thank you so much to the Downtown Council, Casey Streetcar, Kansas City Downtown Neighborhood Association, and Lynchpin Ideas. Just a reminder, we gave you the scoop last week, but the Downtown Dish is on social media. So if you have not already, give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Downtown Dish KC. You'll get sneak peeks of what's coming up in the episode, get a little behind the scenes action, all sorts of stuff. What we're eating, what we're drinking, what we're buying, and we would love for you to join in on the conversation. Wanted to give a big thanks to this week's featured musician, Chico Sierra. We are listening to Chicano Blues. Now, this song is part of a really important local album called Kansas City Syzygy, created by musicians. All this music was either created or mixed for this album during the pandemic. Proceeds from this album go to an incredibly important organization, KC Tenants. The album was designed by JC Franco and directed by 2020 Art in the Loop artist, Robert Castillo. Be sure to learn more about local artist, activist, and musician Chico Sierra at his website, chicosierra.com. Chico, thank you so much for your music this week. All right, friends, got some news for you before we dive into this week's interviews. Do you remember the pop-up market happening last month at Jay Rieger and Co. Distillery? It is cruising on for another month. It will be with us, parking lot provisions, all month in July. You can drive through or walk through. This is an open air, low contact marketplace, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Saturday, right there in the J. Rieger & Co. parking lot. You are going to be able to shop from a variety of local vendors, Bloom Baking, Local Pig, Ruby Jeans, Paradise Garden Club, Stag Pizza, Paseo Grill, Casey Whip & Company, Yoli Tortilleria, and so much more. Plus, if you're not too warm, you can stay after you shop or go before you shop. Jay Rieger, the distillery, has set up an outside cafe so you can have a drink, have a snack. Look for me. I'm going to brave the heat. I'm going to be down there tomorrow. So if we bump into each other, say hi. Don't forget your mask. Don't forget your hand sanitizer. They do have hand sanitizer for sale there at the distillery made by the J Rigger team. So everybody shop safely, have fun, see you out in the parking lot. Friends, I am really excited to welcome Chantil Gori, owner and founder of New Sense of Style to the Downtown Dish. We're going to talk some shopping. Chantil, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Katie. I really appreciate you having me. Oh, I'm so excited. Like I said, I've been stalking your Instagram. Uh, love love what you're doing, but let's, let's uh, give our, our viewers some context. So you started the company as an online boutique, correct? New Sense of Style. 
as an online boutique? Well, to be quite honest, to give you a little bit further background, the the online piece began November of 2018. Prior to that, I started off as a stylist within the area. So um, my husband and I are, well, we moved here from Chicago. He's originally from Chicago, and I grew up in Denver, to be quite honest with you. Um, But we've been within the area of almost, September will be 10 years. So when I first got here, um, I, you know, styling, I I think I say it probably a little too much, but styling is my first love. It is the reason why I got into the fashion industry. Um, And I wanted to create something where, to be quite honest with you, everyday working women and stay at home moms could um, you know, have a reason to, you know, fall in love with themselves again, if you will, because I mm-hmm. find that we really um, kind of put ourselves last um, and more so for guilty reasons. Like if I take this time out for myself, then my kids are suffering or my work is suffering and I don't, you know, I don't really want to do that. I would much rather be the superwoman and, and how I look and feel doesn't really matter. So right. um, I created the company so that I could really show women how to get ready in what I felt like was 30 minutes or less. But really okay. when you were outside looking at them, it was like, Oh my God, I knew she, I know she spent all day, you know? Um, and then from that, my clientele base grew, um, to TV personalities, um, as well as some of the athletes wives. Um, and then as you know, um, a part of like some of my services that I was, I offered was closet edits is what I call them. And it's basically, you know, purging your closet of things that you don't need. Um, oh my gosh, to- I need that so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I need it. I need it. Oh my gosh. So creating an inventory to make your, you know, your wardrobe fully functioning. And then mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I worked with a couple of the local boutiques um, to kind of pull some inventory and things like that. But I found that my clients would ask me like, hey, where are you getting these pieces from? Where is this? Where is that? And unfortunately, if I share that with you, then it kind of, you know, takes me out of the equation. Uh, you, you have the tools at this point to create, you know, to really um, know how to shop. But if I'm telling you where to go in and buy, then it's like, well, you know, what really, what good do I have for you? Right. Anymore? So then I could just go there and buy. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So um, the person that I am made me feel guilty about not wanting to share um so i decided to launch the online piece of the business which again was november of 2018 yep okay and now there's another piece of the business um which which brings us together which i'm so excited about so you have now a physical showroom downtown in the garment district is that right it's actually um in the historic ninth district Oh, Historic yeah. Ninth District, mm-hmm. excuse me. Yep, no, that's okay. Yeah, they're close. They're neighbors. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm curious, did you, uh, and and we're going to talk about the showroom because I, I love, so let's actually get into that first. So is that, okay. Um, okay. I imagine, appointment only, kind of one-on-one service there? How does that work? Yes, yeah, so it is appointment only, and I know, um, and I want to be very clear because I know that 90% of retail right now is probably going to appointment only because of the pandemic that we're all in. But right. however, this was going to be the policy regardless of us being in a pandemic because I really pride myself, um, you know, on the one-on-one. I think that, um, one, I never wanted a retail space. Like I didn't want to become another boutique of a hundred boutiques within the area. Um, right. I wanted to create a really a shopping experience, which allowed you to come in and relax and unwind. And once you go to the website to book each package, you know, kind of has different things that are included in it. Um, but one of the things that I, I really do love is that we actually curate you know, um, looks for you prior to, or it could be one look depending on your package, or it could be, you know, uh, several looks depending on what you select, but we curate a look for you prior to you even walking in. Like it's a, it's a small quiz that is attached to when you're booking, it probably takes you less than five minutes to complete, but it's, it's our way of one getting to kind of know what your sizes are, of course. Um, Mm -hmm. and two, I, you know, have my girls do a little sneak peek because most people are online. So you can find their social medias pretty quickly. Yes. Um, so I have, you know, my girls who go to their social media page just to get more of their personality. Um, and then we, you know, we set up different, different looks for you before you even walk into the showroom. So, um, I think that that is also, you know, something that's really cool and kind of sets us apart from everyone else. Um, absolutely. Most women. Well, it's oh, some, ahead, I'm sorry. 
Oh, no, you go ahead, um, please. Most women um, I find purchase what we pull because it's always something they would never they would never grab for themselves it's like i would never put that together and then we're like yeah i know but put it on and they put it on they're like it's crazy i kind of like it you know what i mean so that that's our goal to push you outside of your comfort zone um to kind of introduce you to things that you would not ever shop for on your own um but again you know we have some women who are very um um self-aware and are like you know, adamant about what their style is. So they'll only stick to that. And that's fine too. That's fine. too. Mm -hmm. Well, and I gotta, um, I gotta ask this. I feel like I know the answer and it's going to make me excited, but I've of course had a struggle over the years, okay. curvy lady. Okay. Um, can you, can you uh, help the, the plus size shoppers out there? A hundred. 110,000%, 110,000%. We carry sizes from, from extra small up to um, M tops, 3X L, and then um, okay. our denim goes from one to 24. So we make Perfect. sure that we, you know, touch on everyone because I mean, there you can't, I can't put ladies in a box based off of their size. So why would I ever just want to, you know, just, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Why would I just want to, um, cater to one specific size just because, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I just don't like it. And I don't call it love. I don't call it plus size. Um, it's called lovely plus to me because I think that okay. everyone, um, who is a little curvier, they're, they're lovely women. And, um, plus size to me sounds, it's almost like a target or something on your back. Like you, you don't even really want yeah. to say like, do you carry plus sides, you know, like yeah. it's like one of them, like, Oh God, here we go. Got to ask for if you have it. And I just think that it's, it's kind of, um, I just wanted to put, I guess a different spin on it to make you, um, love saying it, to be honest with you. I love it. Yeah. The showroom. So that's not necessarily a function of the pandemic. The showroom sounds like it was always part of the business yeah, plan. 110,000%. Okay. Yep. Uh, tell me in particular about this lunchtime event that I think is happening Tuesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. yes, each week. Yes. So we launched it um, actually, uh, th to be quite honest with you, this is our first week, if I'm being honest. So you, okay. you know, you kind of like got in right where you got the after. scoop. Um, but what it was, was we, we've learned that Kansas Cityans, if you will, really pride themselves on locals and, and supporting locals and uplifting local businesses and things of that nature. And we kind of sit in a very yes. quiet corner um, where we have the opportunity to give love to local um, businesses as well. Um, so what we wanted to do was basically intertwine our fashion um, with their food and their menu um, to kind of, one, if we know that when you're, you know, on your way to lunch and you've been working all day, you want to eat. But we also wanted to give right. you the opportunity to shop. So we felt like we would partner with a couple of the businesses that were around us. This week we chose Mildred's because it is like one of our favorites. Literally. Agreed. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, you know, we've had the pleasure of um, talking to the owner. I should say one of the owners mm -hmm. um, who is, you know, just a great guy, just all around, just love, you know, everything about their business and what they stand for. So that was one of the first ones that we chose um, within the area. So we'll cater in food um, for them so that they don't have to worry about lunch. Um, and then just we want okay. you to come in and, and shop and spend your, you know, your lunch hour with us. So you get fed in addition to you get new, you get new threads. <laughs> But our favorite question, any other favorite downtown hangouts, restaurants, businesses? Oh, my gosh. There's so many. Farmhouse, I believe, is the name of it. Yes. yes. Not too far away. It's off of Delaware. Fantastic farm-to-table yep. food. Um, I had, like, this really um, – it was just, to be quite honest with you, a spring salad with a side of chicken. But it was, like, the best chicken ever. And my husband oh. came with me and um, he had like this massive burger. So I ended up like eating my salad and like half of his sandwich as well. But, you know. <laughs> but I also find as a huge uh, fan of cocktails and happy hour, Farmhouse has one of the best kind of undiscovered cocktail menus and programs in Kansas City. It tends to switch up seasonally like they do with their oh, food. Oh, I didn't realize that it but switched just seasonally. Really, but I will agree with you. Really impeccable. 110% yeah. mm -hmm. agree with you in so, terms of their cocktail list and just how unique it is. Uh -huh. Yes, like 
yeah. wholeheartedly. It's your website so, also, so people can connect I'm going there. I'm too, if you don't mind, because for those who may not, not feel all. comfortable coming inside of the showroom just yet because they have small babies at home or somebody who has an immune deficiency, um, you know, anything like that, you can shop online. And the online is mm-hmm. www.newsenseofstyle.com. Um, that is our online okay. um, boutique. Um, I wanted to make sure that, that stayed the same because, of course, they are two separate um you know, businesses, although they're under the same entity. Um, and then the okay. showroom, if you'd like to book, is www.nsos-showroom.com. Thank you so much. And keep us posted um, if you have any news or announcements going forward and we can help spread the word on the dish. You're welcome back well, anytime. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's been really fun, to be quite honest. Are you thirsty? You need a drink? Because our friends at The Shift have got you covered. They have recently launched to-go cocktails. I know, we were waiting for it. And my gosh, they have some delicious concoctions ready. I've seen information this week about a lavender vodka lemonade, pour over ice, delicious. They've also got a whiskey-based mint sweet tea, which sounds super refreshing. I've seen pictures of jello shots. So lots more going on. Best place to go to order and see current selections is the ship's website, shipkc.com. You can place your order, then head to the bar in the West Bottoms to pick up your goodies. Drink safely. Well, I don't know if you've seen, but there is new pop-up yoga happening right in the heart of 18th and Vine. And I am here today with the brains behind the operation, <laughs> Natasha Fuller, cultural curator. Welcome to the Downtown <laughs> Dish. Thank you. Thank you for having me so much. I appreciate it. This is so cool. Okay, so I was on Twitter last weekend and I saw a tweet from Mayor Q himself <laughs> shouting out Yoga on the Vine. So this seems like a pretty new event. Can you give us some some background and kind of how this came to be? Sure. So, um is really crazy. Um, I formerly worked for a company and was having an event down in the Jazz District mm-hmm. and was like, man, it would be so crazy if we could have yoga down here. It's more crazy because I had never done yoga before. Right. I just thought that if I was going to try yoga, it just this would be a good opportunity for me to try yoga in the Jazz District. Right. Because I spent a lot of a time down here and like it matters, it's relevant, it's significant to me. So it was like that would make sense. But... I never did it. So fast forward to a year and a half later and the city was like going crazy with all of the civil unrest Mm -hmm. and craziness and pandemics. I reached out to Makita and was like, we need yoga. Like, I don't know, but I just feel like I need yoga It's going to help. Let's do yoga down in the jazz district. Mm -hmm. And because the jazz district is, like I said, significant to me, like it's a special place for being a person of color. And the history here was like, it's the great, uh, the greatest opportunity to showcase the jazz district in a different light than which others may, per- you know, perceive it or see it typically. Yeah. Um, like there's great things that happen down here. There's great spaces. It's beautiful down here. I was going to say you're um, on location where the, where the yoga happens, right. which is gorgeous. Yes. So it just made sense. So June 6th, we had our first class down here. Okay. And initially we thought we would do it like in the grass, but it was really super hot. And I was like, well, why don't we just like hop over to the pavilion? And, you know, I reached out to the jazz museum to ensure they were okay with us using it. And then they thought it was a great idea. Mm-hmm. So since June 6th, June 6th, excuse me, we've been having yoga on the vine down here okay so it's so. going on a little longer than i than i realized so apologize for that and now it's saturdays and sundays now it's saturdays and sundays yes we it feels like we flip-flopped the very first class we had was on a saturday we took a poll with a few people that were here that day mm-hmm. and we moved to sunday so then we did sunday plus it was international yoga day and that made sense to do it on sunday right. and then We were like, okay, let's take a poll because we were growing more. And so then it was, okay, Saturday is winning. And then Mayor Q invited the whole city to yoga (laughs) on a Sunday. And it was like, oh, we better not confuse anyone. We better just do yoga Saturday and Sunday. 
We're just going to move to a later time so people can actually wake up, get the crust out their eyes, yes. and make it here. So Put myself kind of together like I haven't been sleeping for 12 hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, this right. is so cool. And remind me, when do classes start? Classes start at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Okay, and you're right there in the J. McShane Pavilion? J. McShane Pavilion. Excuse yes, me. Okay. it is... Um, the address for it is 1616 East 18th Street. That's the um, address for the museums down here. Okay. And it's just right behind the museums. On a Saturday, Sunday morning at 9 a.m., parking could get kind of stiff because they have the um, Urban Youth Academy has tournaments on Saturdays and Sundays. Yep. But, but um, 9 a.m. is usually early enough to start beating the traffic. Okay. Perfect. And I'm assuming, you know, people bring your own mats, bring your water, bring... Bring your own mat, bring your water, yes. What, um, what's... Uh, there's a lot of space okay. here. So everybody can spread out. It's a, Yeah, it's a lot of space so everyone can spread out. There's not a ton of space under the pavilion, mm -hmm. but there's plenty of space in the grass. Um, just because of the overwhelming response of the class last week, um, we Mickey's got going to bring her amplifier so everyone can hear her. Okay. I think Dr. Auburn is going to do the same thing. Oh, I didn't mention that. So Mickey is going to lead class on Saturdays. Okay. All things Nikita. And then Dr. Auburn is going to lead class on Sunday. So okay. we've grown our team as we've grown our event, which is awesome. And yeah. That's so cool. I love that. It's pretty cool. Uh, do we need to have Tasha? Do we need to have bring masks with us? Is that a good idea? I think that is a great idea okay. in this environment. I think it makes everybody else more comfortable initially because, like I said, there was only like 10 of us. We had all of this space to spread out. No one was really. But now, because the 10 turned to close to 30, I think. Right. Um, yeah, I think it's a, an awesome idea to bring your mask. Okay. Well, this is so cool. Tell, tell me a little more. I love your role as a cultural curator Bring Shout in out people. to Issa. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So give it. Give us the the quick backstory on that because I love I love your thought process. So I like most black women my age. Uh -huh. It really should be all women because Issa is really phenomenal person and Insecure is a great show. It's super funny, um, but. On the show, Issa was kind of struggling with her finding herself and her identity, which is crazy because I just lost my job. Anyhow, okay. um, but she says that she refers to herself more as a cultural curator because she creates events that brings people together. So that it. bring people together. And I, I like that. That makes a lot of sense for what it is I would like to do. Mm -hmm. And have, so um, have you have you done this before? Have you have you? planned and, and, and done other events before Yoga on the Vine? So I um, founded, co-founded and founded a couple of nonprofits. Um, one of them is Show Me Riders Horse Club. And through that nonprofit, through that organization and that work in the community, it's allowed me to create some events. Um, one of the events that we do through Show Me Riders is Ponies and Pumpkins, which is, it takes the former KCIR drag strip and uh -huh. they've made it a park now. So we do... Um, horse drawn wagon rides through the park and it's like a little mini fall festival and we oh. are able to do that for the community for free so i feel like there's not any other place where you can get that type of activity with horse drawn wagon rides and pony rides and petting zoos and face paintings and gaming trailers and we you know work really hard to find sponsorships to bring that to the community free of charge so love it um yeah i, I do some events and I things like that really make my heart happy <laughs> well, and I love this, too, because let's get back to the Jazz District. And we've been in talks with, with Chef Anita Moore of Soiree, mm -hmm. um, who is just a force, hoping to get her on the show here very soon. Um, I got you. I, okay, <laughs> yes, hook, hook that up, cultural curator, <laughs> <Yes>. please. <laughs> um, but I love this because you were saying um, earlier in our chat, you know, Yoga on the Vine showcasing the district, the neighborhood in a different way. And I feel like there's just some wonderful momentum with the strength in the vine initiative. Definitely. Business owners really coming together. What are you seeing down there um, in the district, Tasha, that, you know, kind of supports all this? Well, everyone is just ready to see, like, what happens next. The yeah. district has a, has a great amount of potential. And just when you know the 
the black excellence that came from here in the 20s and 30s, like to know that our city during the Great Depression was a spot that people could always come to get a gig down in the Jazz Museum or, yep. you know, get some food or still have a good time while so much other chaos was going on around them. That kind of should be reflective of what this space is right now still. Yeah. Um, and it, it's not, but it could be. So I think everybody is that has a stake in the jazz district or has a business down here or even, you know, just loves the, what it stood for and what it should stand for still is just ready to see what's next and what they can do to make that happen. And so everyone is just ready to be collaborative as much as possible to work to, to grow that. Perfect. I love it. Well, you will see me very soon for Yoga on so the excited. Vine. Is there a good um, social media account or website for people to stay up with Yoga on the Vine? Yes, we created an Instagram. It okay. is Yoga on the Vine KC. Okay. And that's probably the best place as of right now. Um, we are creating content and information and just making sure everyone stays. Sorry, it's a big truck coming. It's okay. <laughs> making sure everyone stays like updated and in the know with what's happening and and just as we grow yoga on the vine and what what's next. Perfect. Well, before we we let you go to to be working your magic and bringing more people together, um, our favorite question: Any shout outs to favorite downtown restaurants, bars, hangouts, other businesses? Um, okay, so it's really not downtown, but I swear I have been wanting to go to Blue Nile in the River Market and we area. Do, and we do actually count River Market as okay. downtown, so perfect. I need to be there. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Have you eaten there before? No. I, it's tremendous. I, I cannot wait. Like, I every, 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 every weekend, I'm like, I'm going to City Market, I'm going to Blue Nile, but I haven't made it yet. Yes. Okay. Well... I need to get back there. So, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look for you when I'm there. But yeah, yes, delicious definitely. food. Awesome. Well, Tasha, thank you so much. So excited. Um, please come back anytime thank to you so the much Downtown Dish. Cool. Anything we can do to support you, to amplify what you're doing, um, you've got a seat at our table anytime. Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate yes, it. Was too fast. It would not be summer in downtown Kansas City without one of our favorite annual events the KC Fringe Festival now in its 16th year throughout downtown Kansas City and this year for the first time ever the Fringe Fest is online that means you can pick from a number of ticket options you can choose from 35 shows this year that are representing work from 23 local nine national and three international artists now again different levels of tickets are available the best value is the all access pass for two hundred dollars you'll get all 35 shows that would normally be a value of 285 dollars so you're definitely saving money wonderful deal such an important and fun way to support artists please head over to the Fringe Festival's website, kcfringe.org. They've got schedules, they've got teasers, they've got a lot of social media events, Q&As and things like that. You can get all your information there on the website. All right, we have a little bit of a fangirl moment here on the Downtown Dish. So thrilled to welcome Liz Cook, restaurant critic for The Pitch, one of my favorite writers. Liz, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Katie. Great to be here. Oh, yeah, just your writing is, is <laughs> magical. Uh, Liz, tell us, so so Restaurant Critic now, have you always um, been kind of geared as a food writer or have you done other types of writing throughout your career? Yeah, no, I didn't start as a food writer at all. So I started writing for The Pitch in 2013 and I was actually doing visual art writing for them at the time. Okay. And then I kind of just like hopscotched beats and convinced them to take a chance on me. I mean, I think restaurant critic is one of those like imaginary jobs that I never right. thought I'd be able to do. So I kind of just waited for something to open up. And then um, I started doing restaurant reviews in 2016 and that's my main focus now. Are you able to still um, write how you would normally write or, or what are things looking like for you right now? 
Yeah, so my beat has shifted pretty dramatically because obviously restaurants are closed down or they're not quite operating at their usual capacity. Yep. Um, so a lot of food writers right now are really thinking critically about like what is the role of food criticism right now? And I think the honest answer is that really there really isn't one. I mean, it seems pretty unethical to be attempting anything approximating like a critical review when restaurants have been impacted so disproportionately by this pandemic. And even though things are kind of opening back up again, you know, the staffs, um, the staffs have changed dramatically. Maybe they're operating with half staff or different menus. And so it, you have to really think about it as like a brand new restaurant opening up. And just like you wouldn't kind of go to a restaurant that's open two weeks and, and write a negative review, right. you're probably not going to do that with a restaurant that's just reopening after a pretty like seismic shift. So I've been switching to different kinds of writing. Um, I've been writing about food in a less, uh, in a less kind of flatly critical way and more thinking mm -hmm. about, okay, what's going on with workers right now? Uh, what's going on with restaurants that are just trying to survive? Um, are we providing them the support they need to get through this time? So that's, I think, what the role of food criticism has kind of morphed into over the past couple months. I appreciate that kind of um, digging and investigative work because I need someone to kind of open my eyes and really understand all of the challenges that maybe we're not thinking of. Yeah, I mean, I love the hospitality industry so much and I, I miss going to a restaurant and having that experience so yes. much. Um, but I think the tables have really turned and now it's kind of on us as customers to kind of display the hospitality yeah. that others who have been taking care of us in these restaurants for so long have done. I'm curious just what you're seeing about how, how people are holding up, how they're doing yeah, so I've been talking to a lot of um, workers right now, mm -hmm. both in the front and back of the house. So I guess I should say like front of the house would be like servers and hostesses and back of the house would be people that are working in the kitchen, you know, the dish pit, the line cooks and things like that. Um, and the, I don't want to paint an overly rosy picture. I think people are really concerned and are really kind of scared right now. So I talked to a server earlier today who um, his restaurant opened back up. He worked three shifts and then he quit because he said, I, I don't feel safe coming in. And it's it's not about individual restaurants, not kind of making good choices and doing everything they can, because I think that they are. It's just by virtue of coming into contact with so many people. And, you know, even if you have kind of adequate social distancing in the front of the, the house, at, you know, between tables, that server is running back to a cramped kitchen and being kind of like elbow to elbow with so many people that are trying to like really rush and get things out. And the other thing I found kind of interesting is that a lot of the people I've talked to, especially at fine dining restaurants, haven't really seen a dramatic shift. I mean, in terms of uh, audiences. So, you know, they expected maybe things to kind of ramp up slowly when restaurants started reopening. And I've talked to a couple different people who said, no, we were slammed on day one because people okay. were so eager to get back out there. And so on the one hand, you want to feel that as like a sign of optimism, like, oh, it's great that people are kind of, they want to go back out. We want to return to normal and support these places, but it is still a risk. And so I think a lot about um, what we're asking of the people who are working in the service industry, who for the most part are less likely to have health insurance are less likely to be able to kind of weather um, a major you know, illness or time off work than some of the people that are kind of going out and patronizing these establishments. Well, and I appreciate you speaking to that because honestly, I have been feeling that dilemma here on the downtown dish because we focus on restaurants and bars, um, also definitely a focus on retail. Our goal from the beginning, um, and we're now we're now two months into the show, um, is really just to get people out and about with the caveat at their comfort level. Mm -hmm. So even if that means you're doing curbside pickup, totally great. Maybe you're just taking a walk by yourself downtown, looking at some of the public art, whatever. We're just kind of presenting the options. But I know I myself, a uh, little more willing to maybe go somewhere outside not quite ready for the interior yeah. um, experience yet. And I think, you know, and, and I, uh, I applaud all of the, the restaurants and the businesses for just trying to keep pace with these, with these changes and with these different preferences, just trying to give people as many options as they can within reason. Right. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, I'm still doing curbside, um, you know, kind of, big patios where you have room to spread out I'm comfortable with, but it's going to be a while right. before you've seen me disguise or not inside a dining room. 
I could be looking for you in a disguise. <laughs> we were like, I got her, I got her. Um, well, Liz, speaking of, um, I know we, we uh, share a love of Observation Pizza. Very proud to have Nick on the show a few weeks ago. Would love your thoughts there and also um, any other curbside or, or patio dining that you've been enjoying recently. Yeah, absolutely. So I will say like the one upside of this, of not kind of going in and writing critical reviews is I've been able to kind of get back in touch with the part of me that just gets to enjoy, you know, having yes. someone else cook for me and not have to yes. kind of be constantly picking it apart. But I will say even so, even through my traditional lens, I think observation pizza is fantastic. Like this is the pizza that I've been waiting for to make it to the Metro. The crust is perfect. It's everything yes. I want. Um, and the toppings, like I think, I've heard Nick talk about it as being kind of like dirty delicious or nasty delicious. Right. <laughs> Some of them, they're not like your kind of fussy, quote unquote, highbrow toppings a lot of the time. Um, my favorite pizza that he does is one that's called the Bobby Shazam. And it's okay. got uh, mortadella, which is basically fancy bologna. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. got American cheese, so it's super melty. It's got bacon fat. It has ranch. <laughs> so all of these things that I think like, you know, self-proclaimed foodies or sophisticates might like turn their nose up, but it is so delicious. It is one of the best combinations I've tried. So I would highly recommend if anything I just said sounds at all interesting, oh you, highly recommend going for that one. Yes, I've got to. Oh my gosh. that It almost sounds like a, we were, we were talking about this the other week when I was talking about Harry's Country Club almost sounds like a like a higher end fried bologna version of a pizza and i love i love that yes fried bologna so much oh my god <laughs> okay yes starving um what what else have you been especially appreciating enjoying yeah so um pizza has been a pretty it's been a mainstay because i like yep. being able to pick it up and carry it home um but other kinds of carry out and patio dining are still in the mix um i think brewery imperial is a great place for people that are just trying to stiff their toe into kind of getting out there again because the patio yep. is so big and there's so much space between tables that you have a little bit more room to spread out and you can still kind of like feel like you're enjoying a beer and some fried rolls right. and like, you know, having a kind of experience that you might have had in the before times. Right. Before times. <laughs> the before yeah. times. Yeah, so that's still an option. Um, and then like, you know, the city market obviously can get a little crowded on the weekends, but they still have a lot of outdoor dining options there. And I think like, I always love going to Blue Nile and just getting, you know, a little bit of everything and sitting out in the sun. And um, that's still an option as well. So those are a few that I've kind of been I would recommend. I love it. All, all at the top of the list. I tell you something that I'm actually hoping to cross off my list this very week is finally getting the burger at Ravenous. Oh, yeah. Um, because, yeah, I have heard just across the board raves. And I think... And the fried chicken sandwich at Ravenous is great, too. I recommend that, too, if you haven't had that. Yeah. Okay, so can I tell you a random side note um, that, you know, may make you roll your eyes as a restaurant critic, but I did, uh, sorry to everyone that I do eat local, I swear, as much as I can, but I finally tried the Popeye's <laughs> chicken sandwich last weekend. Okay, it was legit. It was legit. Yeah. I liked the, the pickles a lot. I think we're all, like, gravitating toward comfort food right now. At least I certainly am. So I think that's, oh my gosh. Yeah, I get it. That's... Yeah, fried chicken is and you, my comfort food. Do you also, Liz, as someone who writes about about restaurants and food, do you enjoy cooking as well? I do, and I've had a lot more time to do that at home <laughs> since I've been uh, working from home almost entirely since March. Uh, so yeah, I have been uh, doing a lot of like weird experiments, and we have a garden. I think a lot of people have been growing victory gardens right now too. Yeah, you're one of them. So that's been fun. I'm waiting for my tomatoes. <laughs> Oh, Liz, thank you so much. Come back to the dish anytime. If you have new <laughs> recommendations you want to share, you've always got a seat at our table. Thanks, All right, my darlings. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Downtown Dish. Chico, thank you again for this beautiful music. I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. You might be wondering, feeling like I've got some big plans. You bet I've got some big plans. I'm headed to Tannin. Tiki pop-up is back. I'm gonna drink tiki cocktails, eat tiki food. I'm gonna just pretend we're in a sultry island escape. K 
kick back, relax. Maybe I'll see you there, whatever you're doing. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget, say hi on Twitter and Instagram at Downtown Dish KC, and I'll see you next week. Cheers! Be sure to learn more about local artists. Lo Be 